The Moscow Constantinople Schism, also known as the Orthodox Church Schism of 2018, is a schism which began on 15 October 2018 when the Russian Orthodox Church unilaterally severed full communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. This was done in response to a decision of the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate on of October 2018 to move towards granting independence autocephaly to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, to re-establish the storopigen of the Ecumenical Patriarch in Kiev, to revoke the legal binding of the Letter of 1686 which led to the Russian Orthodox Church establishing jurisdiction over the Ukrainian Church, and to lift the excommunications which affected clergy and faithful of two unrecognized Orthodox Churches in Ukraine. Those two Two churches, the UAOC and the UOCKP, were competing with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Moscow Patriarchate, and were, and still are, considered schismatics by the Patriarchate of Moscow. According to the plans of Constantinople, the members of these two structures, along with some members of the UOCMP, will unite in a new structure, the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Another name is the Orthodox Local Church of Ukraine. The corresponding Holy Council of the Bishops of both churches is preliminary scheduled to be held on 15 December 2018. In that statement of October 15, the Russian Orthodox Church barred all members of the Moscow Patriarchate from taking part in communion, baptism, and marriage at any church controlled by the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Prior to that, in their synod on 14 September 2018, the Moscow Patriarchate broke off participation in any episcopal assemblies such as the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of the United States of America, theological discussions, multilateral commissions, and any other structures that are chaired or co-chaired by representatives of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. The Russian Orthodox Church is the largest of the independent autocephalous churches that together make up the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Ecumenical Patriarchate holds a special place of honor within Orthodoxy because of its historical location at the capital of the former Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire and its role as the mother church of most modern Orthodox churches. It serves as the seat for the Ecumenical Patriarch, currently Bartholomew I, who enjoys the status of primus inter pares first among equals among the world's Eastern Orthodox prelates and is widely regarded as the representative and spiritual leader of the world's 300 million Orthodox Christians. Besides its religious aspect, both Russia and Ukraine also see the dispute as part of a wider East-West conflict involving Russia's 2014 annexation of the Crimea and its military intervention in Ukraine, as well as Ukraine's desire to to join the European Union and NATO. On 28 November 2018, Ukrainian President Poroshenko declared the 2018 Kerch Strait incident was provoked by Russia in order to force Ukraine to declare martial law and therefore to prevent Ukraine from receiving its tomos of autocephaly. This schism shares similarities with the Moscow Constantinople Schism of 1996, 22 years prior, which related to the canonical jurisdiction over Estonia. Background After the baptism of Rus, its lands were under the control of the Metropolitan of Kiev. Among the 24 Metropolitans who held the throne before the Mongol invasion, only two were of local origin and the rest were Greek. Usually, they were appointed by Constantinople and were not chosen by the bishops of their dioceses, as it should be done according to the canon. After the Mongol invasion, the southern part of Rus was heavily devastated and the disintegration of Kievan Rus accelerated. Metropolitan Kirill III, who occupied the throne for 30 years, spent almost all of his time in the lands of Vladimir Suzdal Rus and visited Kiev only twice, although earlier he had come from Galicia and had been nominated for the post of Metropolitan by the Prince Daniel of Galicia. After the new Mongol raid in 1299, Metropolitan Maxim finally moved to Vladimir in the north, and did not even leave a bishop behind. In 1303 a new cathedral was created for southwest Rus in Galicia and the new Metropolitan was consecrated by Constantinople, but its existence ended in 1355 after the galicia volhynia Wars. In 1325, Metropolitan Peter moved to Moscow, thus greatly contributing to the rise of the Grand Duchy of Moscow, which gradually conquered other Russian principalities in the northeast of the former Kievan Rus. Another part of Kievan Rus gradually came under the rule of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland, which entered into rivalry with Moscow. In particular, the Grand Dukes of Lithuania sought from Constantinople a separate metropolitan for the Orthodox who lived in their lands. Although the Metropolitan in Moscow continued to retain the title of 
Metropolitan of Kiev and all Rus. He could not rule the Orthodox outside the borders of the Grand Duchy of Moscow. Constantinople twice agreed to create a separate metropolitan for Lithuania, but these decisions were not permanent, Constantinople being inclined to maintain a single church government on the lands of the former Kievan Rus. In 1439, Constantinople entered into union with the Roman Catholic Church. In Moscow, this decision was rejected outright, and Metropolitan Isidore, consecrated by Constantinople, was accused in heresy, imprisoned, and later expelled. In 1448, the Council of Northeastern Russian Clergy in Moscow, at the behest of Prince Vasily II of Moscow, elected Jonah the Metropolitan of Kiev and all Rus without the consent of the Patriarch of Constantinople. In 1469 Patriarch Dionysus I stated that Constantinople would not recognize any metropolitan ordained without its blessing. Meanwhile, the metropolis of Kiev de facto in Novogradok stayed under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople, and in 1458, Bishop Gregory became the Uniate Metropolitan in Kiev with the title of the Metropolitan of Kiev, Gallic and all Rus. Moscow's de facto independence from Constantinople remained unrecognized until 1589 when Patriarch of Constantinople Jeremiah II approved the creation of a new, Fifth Orthodox Patriarchate in Moscow. This decision was finally confirmed by the four older patriarchs in 1593. The Patriarch of Moscow became the head of all Russia and northern countries, and Chernihiv now in Ukraine was one of his dioceses. However, he had no power among the Orthodox bishops of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, who remained under the rule of Constantinople. At the same time, the Orthodox hierarchs of those lands were inclined to the union with Rome, despite the resistance of their parishes, who formed the Orthodox Brotherhoods or fraternities to keep their identity. On the way from Moscow, Jeremiah II visited the lands of present-day Ukraine and committed an unprecedented act, granting storopegia direct subordination to patriarch to many Orthodox Brotherhoods. This provoked the anger of the local bishops and soon the Union of Brest was proclaimed, which was supported by the majority of the Orthodox bishops of the Commonwealth, including Metropolitan Mikhail Rogoza. Officially, the Orthodox but not the Uniate Metropolis of Kiev in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was eliminated and re-established only in 1620, in subsequent co-existence with Uniate Metropolis. That led to sharp conflict and numerous revolts culminating in the Komelnitsky Uprising. In 1654, Russia entered the war with the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, it quickly occupied, for a while, the lands of present Belarus, and gained some power over the Hetmanate pursuant to the Pereyaslav Agreement 1654. The official title of Patriarch Nikon of Moscow was, "...Patriarch of Moscow and all Great, Lesser, and White Russia." However, the Metropolitan of Kiev Sylvester Kosov had managed to defend his independence from the Moscow Patriarchate. The Moscow government, which needed the support of the Orthodox clergy, postponed the resolution of this issue. In 1686, the Ecumenical Patriarch approved a new Orthodox Metropolitan of Kiev who would be ordained by the Moscow Patriarchate and thus transferred, albeit with certain qualifications, a part of the Kiev ecclesiastical province to the jurisdiction of Patriarchate of Moscow the Russian Orthodox Church. Ruski Mir versus Romeozine The historical rivalry between the Ecumenical Patriarchate and the Russian Orthodox Church intensified after the Cold War. Indeed, after the Cold War, Moscow and Istanbul both emerged as two centers of Orthodox power. Those two Orthodox churches, with two different ideologies, are trying to get back the preeminence they had in the past. Topic. Rusky Mir Rusky Mir literally, Russian world, is an ideology promoted by many in the leadership of the Russian Orthodox Church. This ideology, concocted as a reaction to the loss of Russian control over Ukraine and Belarus after the fall of the Soviet Union, seeks to assert a spiritual and cultural unity of the peoples descended from the Kievan Rus, presumably under Russian leadership. Patriarch Kirill of Moscow also shares this ideology. For the Russian Orthodox Church, Ruski Mir is also a spiritual concept, a reminder that through the baptism of Rus, God consecrated these people to the task of building a holy Rus. 
Topic: <laughs> Romeozine. The dominant ideology of the Patriarchate of Constantinople is the ideology of Romeozine, Greekness, including Christian Orthodoxy. Romeozine is a culturally and ecclesiastically irredentist ideology which seeks to regain the preeminence in the Orthodox world that the Greeks of Constantinople enjoyed under the Ottomans, just as the Ruski Mir attempts to regain the preeminence that Russia held under the Soviets. Topic. 1996 Schism over Estonia The Moscow-Constantinople Schism of 1996 began on 23 February 1996, when the Russian Orthodox Church severed full communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, and ended on 16 May 1996 when the Russian Orthodox Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate reached an agreement establishing parallel jurisdictions. The excommunication was in response to the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision on 20 February 1996 to re-establish an autonomous Orthodox Church in Estonia under the Ecumenical Patriarchate's canonical jurisdiction. The 1996 schism has similarities with the schism of October 2018. Both schisms were caused by a dispute between the Russian Orthodox Church and the Ecumenical Patriarchate concerning the canonical jurisdiction over a territory in Eastern Europe upon which the Russian Orthodox Church claimed to have the exclusive canonical jurisdiction, territory which after the collapse of the Soviet Union had become an independent state Ukraine, Estonia. The break of communion in 1996 was made by Moscow unilaterally, as in 2018. Deterioration of Moscow–Constantinople relations The Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople claims to be the foremost leader and international representative of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Church is geographically divided into several largely independent local churches, each with its own leader patriarch, archbishop or metropolitan. Shortly after Ukraine gained its independence, some of its presidents have tried to ask the Ecumenical Patriarchate to give Ukraine a church distinct from the Moscow Patriarchate. Three Orthodox churches in Ukraine Since the end of the 20th century, three Orthodox jurisdictions have existed in Ukraine. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate UOCMP, which is part of the Russian Orthodox Church and thus under the Moscow Patriarchate. This church was, until the 11th of October 2018, the only Orthodox Church in Ukraine recognized by other Orthodox Churches. The Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church UAOC, led by Metropolitan Makary, which was independent, having been founded in 1921 following the establishment of the short-lived Ukrainian People's Republic and having survived the Soviet Union both outside and inside the country. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Kiev Patriarchate UOCKP, led by the self-proclaimed Patriarch Philaray of Kiev, an independent church which was founded in July 1992. In January 1992, after Ukraine gained its independence from the Soviet Union following its dissolution, Metropolitan of Kiev Filaray of the UOCMP convened an assembly at the Kiev Petrsk Lavra that adopted a request for autocephaly to the Moscow Patriarch. The Patriarchate of Moscow did not comply and asked Filaray to resign. Filaray did not resign and was suspended on 27 May 1992 by the UOCMP. The bishops loyal to Metropolitan Filaray and a similar group from the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church organized a unifying synod which was held on 25–26 June 1992. The delegates agreed to form a combined church named the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Kiev Patriarchate under a patriarch they elected, Patriarch Msty Slav. Filaray was defrocked on of July 1992 by the Russian Orthodox Church. Filaray was then anathemized by the Russian Orthodox Church in 1997. The UAOC and the UOCKP were not recognized by other Orthodox churches and were considered schismatic. Rock officials stated that the anathematization of Filaray was recognized by all the local Orthodox churches, including the Church of Constantinople. 
On the 11th of October 2018, the excommunications of the UAOC and the UOCKP were lifted. However, the Ecumenical Patriarchate did not recognize neither the UAOC nor the UOCKP as legitimate, and their respective leaders were not recognized as primates of their respective churches. As of 2018, all three churches, the UAOC, the UOCKP and the UOCMP, are still active in the country. The UOCMP has 12,064 active parishes, the UOCKP—4,807, and UAOC—1,048. Ecumenical Patriarchate and the ecclesiastical situation in Ukraine In April 2014, the Ecumenical Patriarch talked about the ecclesiastical problems in Ukraine during his Palm Sunday sermon and said, T he Ecumenical Patriarchate recognizes the difficult challenges facing the blessed Ukrainian people today. In February 2015, the primate of the Canadian Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Metropolitan Yuri Kalishchik, during a round table in the Ukrainform Agency, declared that T he Patriarchy of Constantinople is watching the situation in Ukraine and considers the ideal solution to get the unified orthodoxy and will work on uniting orthodoxy in Ukraine. He added that the Constantinople Patriarchate is waiting for the request and guidance from the Ukrainian Orthodox jurisdictions here, but first of all it is waiting for ASTEP from the President of Ukraine. On 6 June 2015, the UAOC requested to the Ecumenical Patriarchate to receive the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church to the Ecumenical Patriarchate as a metropolis with sick, should be a metropolis with the rights of self-governance. On 24 June. The Holy Synod of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate, held on 24 June in Kiev, Kiev issued a statement about the presence of two bishops of the Constantinople Patriarchate in Ukraine Bishop Daniel of Pamphilon and Bishop Alarion and their meeting with Ukrainian clergy. Bishops of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate expressed concern about Bishop Daniel of Pamphilon and Bishop Alarion's activities in the canonical territory of the UOC MP without consent of the hierarchs of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate On the 27th of June the UOC KP after its holy synod the same day decided to plan to ask the ecumenical patriarch to recognize its autocephalous status on the 2nd of February 2016 the patriarch of Moscow officially declared that it is important that there is already a common understanding of the need for consensus among all the churches, excluding any unilateral actions in granting autocephaly. The same day he warned that, "...the unilateral recognition of the schism in Ukraine will unavoidably have catastrophic consequences for the unity of the Orthodox Church." On this occasion, the Ecumenical Patriarch declared, we all recognize that Metropolitan Onifry is the only canonical head of orthodoxy in Ukraine." In June 2016, the 2016 Pan-Orthodox Council in Crete. However, a few days before it began, the Russian Orthodox Church refused to participate. Previously the Orthodox Churches of Georgia, Bulgaria, and Antioch had also refused to participate. One of the issues cited was the method of proclaiming the autonomy of the Orthodox Churches. On 16 June, Ukraine's parliament, the Verkhovna Rada, asked Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew I of Constantinople for autocephaly for the Orthodox Church of Ukraine and thus independence from the Russian Orthodox Church. On the 11th of June, before the adoption of the resolution by the Rada, the Moscow Patriarchate sharply criticized the appeal of the deputies. However, the council in Crete did not consider and did not officially comment on the Ukrainian question. On the 15th of December 2017, Filaret in Kiev met with personal representatives of the Patriarchate of Constantinople, Bishop Daniel, UOC of USA, and Bishop Hilarion, UOC of Canada, and discussed with them issues of mutual interest. Topic: <laughs> Autocephaly of the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Topic. June 2016 Request of Autocephaly 
On 16 June 2016, the Ukrainian parliament successfully voted a resolution to appeal to the Ecumenical Patriarch to to recognize invalid the act in 1686 as the one adopted in violation of the sacred canons of the Orthodox Church. To take an active part in overcoming the Church schism by convening Ukrainian Unification Council under the auspices of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, which would solve all controversial issues and unite the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and to grant autocephaly to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. On the same day, the Russian Orthodox Church protested fiercely against this resolution. On 19 July, the Ecumenical Patriarchate said it would create a synodal commission to examine. The Ukrainian parliament's request to grant autocephaly to Ukraine. On 1 August 2016, Arbashab Job of the Ecumenical Patriarchate declared in an interview given to the Religion Information Service of Ukraine that Constantinople has always believed that the territory of Ukraine is the canonical territory of the Church of Constantinople. <laughs> April 2018 request of autocephaly On 9 April 2018, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko had a meeting in Istanbul with the Ecumenical Patriarch during which Poroshenko "...noted the importance of the introduction of a single local Orthodox Church in Ukraine aspired by the Ukrainian people." At that time, an article published on the pro-Moscow anonymous website Union of Orthodox Journalists declared that no relevant progress concerning the question of a local Orthodox Church for Ukraine had been made. On 17 April, Ukrainian President Poroshenko met in Turkey with the Ecumenical Patriarch and made an appeal supported by various Ukrainian MPs to the Ecumenical Patriarchate to grant autocephaly to Ukraine. Both parties reached an agreement after a seven hours long negotiation, said appeal was later published on the official official website of the President of Ukraine. The UOCKP and the UAOC also sent a similar appeal to the Ecumenical Patriarchate in what Poroshenko described as, "...a rare united move of the two churches the UOCKP and the UAOC." On 18 April, the draft resolution on the support of Poroshenko's appeal was submitted to the Ukrainian parliament, and on 19 April it was adopted. The text of the appeal of the Ukrainian parliament was longer and contained more arguments in favor of Ukraine's autocephaly compared Poroshenko's appeal. On 20 April, the official request to issue a tomos of autocephaly was delivered to Ecumenical Patriarchate. On the same day, 20 April, the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate voted to proceed with taking the necessary steps for granting autocephaly to the Orthodox Christians of Ukraine. On the 22nd of April, the Ecumenical Patriarchate issued an official communique declaring that the Synod had "...examined matters pertaining to the ecclesiastical situation in Ukraine, as done in previous synodal sessions, and having received from ecclesiastical and civil authorities a petition that requests the bestowal of autocephaly, decided to closely communicate and coordinate with its sister Orthodox churches concerning this matter." The same day, President Poroshenko declared on his official Facebook page that, "...the Ecumenical Patriarchate had commenced the procedures necessary for granting autocephaly to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church." On 23 June 2018, a delegation of the UOCMP held talks with Patriarch Bartholomew and other Greek hierarchs. The negotiations ended up with neither signed documents nor a joint statement. The goal of these talks were, according to the UOCMP, for the purpose of obtaining reliable information from Patriarch Bartholomew himself regarding initiatives for the possible granting of atomos for autocephaly, as well as for the purpose of communicating the position of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church on this issue. The hierarchs also informed the Patriarch about the current situation of church life in Ukraine. On 25 June, the UOCMP declared it had heard the message of Metropolitan Onifry and the permanent members of the Holy Synod of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church on the meeting that took place on June 23 in Istanbul between the delegation of the UOCMP and the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew and members of the Holy Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Therefore the hierarchs of the UOCMP adopted a joint statement in which they expressed their vision for the further development of the mission of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Ukrainian society. Quote, the statement concludes that, 
T he current canonical status is quite sufficient for the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to fruitfully carry out its mission among the people of Ukraine. On 31 August 2018, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew met with Patriarch Kirill of Moscow to discuss Ukrainian autocephaly, informing him that they are implementing already this decision to grant autocephaly, on 1 September, in Istanbul, a synaxis of hierarchs of the ecumenical throne began. Patriarch Bartholomew delivered the keynote address to over 100 hierarchs of the throne, stating, among other things, the origin of difficulties and reactions in Ukraine are neither a recent phenomenon nor something created by the ecumenical patriarchate. Already from the early 14th century, when the see of the Kievan metropolis was moved without the canonical permission of the Mother Church to Moscow, there have been tireless efforts on the part of our Kievan brothers for independence from ecclesiastical control by the Moscow Center. The tome proclaiming Moscow as a patriarchate does not include the region of today's metropolis of Kiev in the jurisdiction of Moscow. Moreover, the canonical dependence of Kiev to the Mother Church of Constantinople remained constant and uninterrupted. S. Ins Russia, as the one responsible for the current painful situation in Ukraine, is unable to solve the problem. The Ecumenical Patriarchate assumed the initiative of resolving the problem in accordance with the authority afforded to it by the sacred canons and the jurisdictional responsibility over the Eparchy of Kiev, receiving a request to this end by the Honorable Ukrainian Government, as well as recurring requests by Patriarch Philare of Kiev appealing for our adjudication of his case. Ecumenical Patriarchs Legates in Ukraine and Reactions of the Russian Orthodox Church On 7 September, the Patriarch of Constantinople announced, on the official websites of the Ecumenical Patriarch Permanent Delegation to the World Council of Churches as well as on the official website of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, that he had appointed Archbishop Daniel of Pamphylon and Bishop Alarion as his exarchs and legates in Ukraine. Those appointments were, according to the official announcement on the official website of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, W. Ithan the framework of the preparations for the granting of autocephaly to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Daniel of Palflion and Alarion had already been sent by the Ecumenical Patriarchate in Ukraine in 2015 which at the time led to an official protest by the UOCMP. The same day, the chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilarion, gave an interview to Russia 24 TV channel about the appointment of the two exarchs. In this interview, Hilarion issued his warning that the Russian Orthodox Church will have no other choice but to break the communion with the Ecumenical Patriarch if autocephaly is granted to Ukraine. This interview was entirely published on the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations's official website in English the same day, on 8 September, the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church expressed its resolute protest against and deep indignation at the report published a day prior on the appointment of the two hierarchs of the Ecumenical Patriarchate as exarchs of the Patriarchate for Kiev. The same day, on a social network, Vladimir Legoida, head of the Synodal Department for Church, Society and Media Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, commented on the topic and stated that t he appointment by the Patriarch of Constantinople of his episcopal representatives in Ukraine, without agreement with the Patriarch of Moscow and his beatitude the Metropolitan of Kiev is an unprecedentedly gross incursion into the Moscow Patriarchate's canonical territory. These actions cannot be left unanswered. The same day, the OUCMP published an official declaration on its website which states, T he appointment of the two exarchs is a gross violation of the canonical territory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The decision made by the Constantinopolitan Patriarchate contradicts the second canon of the Second Ecumenical Council Constantinople, namely that, without being invited, bishops must not leave their own diocese and go over to churches beyond its boundaries. <laughs> September 2018, Russian Orthodox Synods, Retaliatory Measures, and the Aftermath 
On 14 September 2018, in response to the appointment of those two exarchs, the Russian Orthodox Church decided to hold an extraordinary session to take retaliatory measures after the appointment by the Patriarchate of Constantinople of its exarchs to Kiev following up the decision of this church's synod to grant autocephalous status to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. The Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church decided A statement was released the same day explaining the situation and the sanctions taken to protest against the ecumenical patriarch's behavior. On the same day, Metropolitan Hilarion clarified the situation in an interview published on the official website of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations. In the interview, Hilarion stated, on 23 September 2018 Patriarch Bartholomew, during a Mass he was celebrating in the St. Focus Orthodox Church, proclaimed that he had sent a message that Ukraine would receive autocephaly as soon as possible, since it is entitled to it. On 30 September 2018, in an interview to Izvestia Daily published on the official website of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilarion commented. The Russian Church does not need to fear isolation. If Constantinople continues its anti-canonical actions, it will place itself outside the canonical space, outside the understanding of church order that distinguishes the Orthodox Church." On 2 October, Patriarch Kirill of the Rock sent a letter to all the autocephalous Orthodox churches to ask them to hold a pan-Orthodox discussion. Concerning the question of Ukraine's autocephaly, on 5 October, the Metropolitan Pavel, head of the Belarusian Orthodox Church Exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church, announced the meeting of the Holy Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church on 15 October in Minsk. He said that, "...the situation with the Orthodox Church in Ukraine will be on the agenda of the meeting." This meeting had been announced previously on 7 January 2018 and was at the time most likely to take place in mid-October. On 9 October, Metropolitan Hilarion, chairman of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church warned that, if the project for Ukrainian autocephaly is carried through, it will mean a tragic and possibly irretrievable schism of the whole orthodoxy. He added that, ignoring sacred canons shakes up the whole system of the church organism. Schismatics and other local churches are well aware that if autocephaly is given to the Ukrainian schismatics, it will be possible to repeat the same scenario anywhere. That is why we state that autocephaly in Ukraine will not be the healing of the schism, but its legalization and encouragement. The 11th of October 2018 communique of the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate On of October 2018, after a regular synod, the Patriarchate of Constantinople renewed an earlier decision to move towards granting autocephaly to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The synod also withdrew Constantinople's 332 years old qualified acceptance of the Russian Orthodox Church's canonical jurisdiction over the Ukrainian Church contained in a letter of 1686. The Synod also lifted the excommunication of Patriarch Philaray of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, Kiev Patriarchate UOCKP, and Metropolitan Makary of the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church UAOC, and both bishops were "...canonically reinstated to their hierarchical or priestly rank, and their faithful restored to communion with the Church." On the evening of of October, the day of the declaration of the Patriarch of Constantinople, Ukraine's president, Poroshenko, enthusiastically welcomed Constantinople's move, which Poroshenko, prematurely and therefore erroneously, described as the granting of atomos of autocephaly a formal decree of church independence to the Ukrainian church. He presented Ukrainian church independence as part of Ukraine's wider conflict with Russia that involves Russia's 2014 annexation of the Crimea, Russia's military intervention in Ukraine, and Ukraine's desire to integrate with the West by joining the European Union and NATO, which is a perception broadly shared by both sides in the dispute. On the 12th of October 2018, the day after the Ecumenical Patriarch's decision, according to the Kremlin website, Russian President Vladimir Putin held an operational meeting with the permanent members of the Security Council. The Security Council of Russia that discussed issues of the domestic Russian socio-economic agenda and international issues. 
Ukraine's Euromaidan press described this as Putin convening an extraordinary meeting of the National Security and Defense Council, where the situation of the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine was discussed. And it added that this is a revealing slip of the tongue, since to assuage Ukrainians, the UOCMP has been insisting it is independent of Moscow and in no way the Russian Church in Ukraine. Similar accounts were given by Russia's Sputnik News and by the Religious Information Service of Ukraine, quoting Interfax Religion, Putin's press secretary Dmitry Peskov, and the Kremlin website. On 12 October 2018, the UOCKP declared in a communique that this decision from the Ecumenical Patriarchate had restored the canonical recognition of the episcopate and clergy of the Kiev Patriarchate. However, it was later clarified that Filare was considered by the Ecumenical Patriarchate only as the former Metropolitan of Kiev, and Makari as the former Metropolitan of LVLV and, on 2 November, that the Ecumenical Patriarchate did not recognize neither the UAOC nor the UOCKP as legitimate and that their respective leaders were not recognized as primates of their churches. The Synod was viewed as a key step towards those two organizations merging into a single church independent from Moscow. The Russian Orthodox Church is linked to 12,000 parishes in Ukraine while the Kiev Patriarchate and UAOC control about 6,000. However, it is believed that many of the Russian-controlled Ukrainian parishes may defect to the Kiev organizations. In an interview given to the BBC on 2 November 2018, Archbishop Job, Hierarch of the Church of Constantinople, explained that since the Ecumenical Patriarchate abolished the decision of the 1686 letter on of October 2018, the UOC MP canonically ceased to exist in Ukraine on of October 2018. He added that canonically there could be only one church on the territory of Ukraine and that therefore an exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine was simply uncanonical, and that in Ukraine, there can be no repetition of Estonia's scenario. He also explained that the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision was urged by the reactions of Ukrainian Orthodox faithfuls after the annexation of Crimea by Russia and the war in the Donbass who wanted to stay Orthodox but did not want to be part of the UOCMP. The 29 November 2018 communique of the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate The regular November session of the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate started on the 27th of November and ended on the 29th of November, lasting 3 days. On the 27th of November, the Ecumenical Patriarchate decided unanimously to dissolve its exarchate of the Archdiocese of Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe, AROCWE. The communique says the Ecumenical Patriarchate decided to revoke the Patriarchal Tomos of 1999 by which it granted pastoral care and administration of Orthodox parishes of Russian tradition in Western Europe to his Archbishop Exarch. Today's decision aims to further strengthen the link of Russian tradition parishes with the Mother Church of the Patriarchate of Constantinople. It is by pastoral concern that the Ecumenical Patriarchate has decided to integrate and connect parishes to the various holy metropolises of the Ecumenical Patriarchate in the countries where they are located. Our Mother Church will continue to ensure and guarantee the preservation of their liturgical and spiritual tradition." On 29 November, the Synod ended. Some like the Religious Information Service of Ukraine had expected the Ecumenical Patriarchate to give the date of the Unification Council of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. However, no date was given. After the end of its synod, the Ecumenical Patriarchate later released, on its official website, an official communique. In said communique, the Ecumenical Patriarchate announced, 1, that the synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate had decided to dissolve the AROCWE thereby entrusting its faithful to the hierarchs of the ecumenical throne in Europe. Two, that, in anticipation of the granting of the Tomos of Autocephaly to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate had drafted the Ukrainian Church's constitutional charter. On the same day, President Poroshenko said in an official speech to the Ukrainian nation that the date for the Unification Council for the Ukrainian Church would be announced soon by the Ecumenical Patriarch. Topic. 
"...break of communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate by the Russian Orthodox Church." On 15 October 2018, the Holy Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church, meeting in Minsk, decided to cut all ties with the Constantinople Patriarchate. This decision forbade joint participation in all sacraments, including communion, baptism, and marriage, at any church worldwide controlled by Constantinople. At the time of the schism, the Russian Orthodox Church had over 150 million followers, more than half of all Eastern Orthodox Christians. The same day, after the Synod, a briefing for journalists was given by Metropolitan Hilarion, chairman of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, in which he declared that t he decision on complete cessation of the Eucharistic communion with the Patriarchate of Constantinople was taken today. <laughs> Declarations by the Russian Orthodox Church The next day, Metropolitan Hilarion, chairman of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church, explained on Russian television that the decisions of the Patriarch of Constantinople run contrary to the canonical tradition of the Orthodox Church. Moreover, an official communicate from the External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church published the same day quoted Hilarion saying, we no longer have a single coordinating center in the Orthodox Church, and we should very clearly realize that the Patriarchate of Constantinople has self-destructed as such because having invaded the canonical boundaries of another local church, by legitimatizing a schism it the Ecumenical Patriarchate has lost the right to be called the coordinating center for the Orthodox Church. On 17 October, Metropolitan Hilarion was interviewed by the BBC Russian Service. This interview was published on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church the very same day. Hilarion declared that, The fact that the Patriarchate of Constantinople has recognized a schismatic structure means for us that Constantinople itself is now in schism. It has identified itself with a schism. Accordingly, we cannot have the full Eucharistic communion with it. Hilarion added that when members of the Russian Orthodox of Moscow Patriarchate pay visits to the monasteries on Mount Athos, they cannot participate in the sacraments, for example, receive communion, and promised punishment to any priests who participate in the divine services together with the local clergy. It is known that Russia makes large donations to the monasteries on Athos the sum of $200 million was announced, and the highest Russian officials and oligarchs run charitable foundations and make pilgrimages to Athos. Hilarion hinted that, H.I. story shows that when Athos is concerned over something, the monasteries on the holy mountain do find ways to inform the Patriarch of Constantinople about it and called on Russian businessmen to switch donations to Russian sacred places. On 19 October, during a meeting with Pope Francis, Hilarion announces him that, "...because of the actions of the Patriarchate of Constantinople the Russian Orthodox Church had to suspend its participation in the work of the Joint International Commission for Theological Dialogue between the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church." Hilarion explained on November that as was due to the fact that the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church had previously, on 14 September, decided, "...to break off the participation of the Russian Orthodox Church in the Episcopal Assemblies and in the Theological Dialogues, Multilateral Commissions and any other structures chaired or co-chaired by representatives of the Patriarchate of Constantinople." On the 22nd of October, Hilarion published a declaration on the same official website which stipulates that according to the Russian Orthodox Church, Philare was and remains a schismatic, despite the recognition of Philare by the Patriarch of Constantinople. In the declaration, Hilarion also expressed his fears that, since on 20 October 2018 the UOCKP had decided to give the title of Archimandrite of the Kiev Pechersk and Poche of Lavras to Philare, Philare could be planning to seize the main holy sites of the canonical Ukrainian Church i.e. the Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate. On 30 October Filare declared that after the Unification Council there would be no violence against the canonical UOC, including in resolving property issues. On 23 October, Archpriest Igor Yakumchuk, from the Moscow Patriarchate Department for External Church Relations Secretary for Far Abroad, told Interfax that 
G. Ivan that the Byzantine Empire long ago ceased to exist and that Istanbul is not even the capital of Turkey now. There are no more canonical foundations even for the symbolic primacy of the Constantinople Patriarchate in the Orthodox world and that the rock would not comply to the ecumenical patriarch's decision on the 28th of October the patriarch of Moscow Kirill stated in a speech which was 2 days later published on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church that there was no conflict whatsoever between Constantinople and Moscow there is Moscow's defense of the inviolable canonical norms if one of the churches supports the schismatics, if one of the churches violates canons, then she ceases to be an Orthodox Church. Therefore, the position of the Russian Orthodox Church today, which has stopped the liturgical mention of the Patriarch of Constantinople, has to do not only with the relationships between the two patriarchs, the point is the very nature of the Orthodox Church H. In an interview given to Orthodoxia.info published on 6 November 2018, Metropolitan Onofre's spokesman, Archbishop Clement Vicaria, declared that the ecumenical patriarch should have remembered that Byzantium ended 500 years ago, and added that the Church lives according to the Gospel and not based on prerogatives rooted in a non-existent empire. On November, the Moscow Patriarchate established a parish in Constantinople, a territory under the canonical jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. During the month of November, Metropolitan Hilarion gave some interviews to news agencies from different countries, which were published on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church. He declared that the mechanisms of inter-Orthodox dialogue and cooperation, which were developing for a long while, have been destroyed. T. He Patriarchate of Constantinople, first in honor, acted as coordinator of the inter-Orthodox activities. Yet, now, when over a half of all the Orthodox Christians in the world are not in communion with it, Constantinople has lost this role. Quote dot. In another interview he said that the ecumenical patriarch claims the power over history itself by revoking decisions made over three centuries ago. That t he danger of destruction of ages old traditions has been more and more clearly realized now by primates and hierarchs of local Orthodox churches, who speak out in favor of a pan-Orthodox discussion on the Ukrainian problem. In the new situation, which has shaped now, we have to search for new forms of communication of churches adequate to it and that the ecumenical patriarch could not chair a pan-Orthodox council since t he coordinating role that the throne of Constantinople played, though not without difficulties, in the Orthodox world in the second part of the 20th century, cannot be played by it now. Because t he patriarchate of Constantinople has self-destructed as the coordinating center for Orthodox churches. Quote, in his last interview he declared that the ecumenical patriarch's actions allegedly aimed to heal the Ukrainian schism a situally lead to the deepening of the schism in Ukraine and to creating for the Orthodox Church an unprecedented situation when the whole body of the world orthodoxy may find itself split into pieces. On the 22nd of November, Metropolitan Hilarion said on the channel Russia TV 24 that Ukraine would never get its autocephaly. On 26 November, Metropolitan Hilarion declared that the ROC would send a priest in South Korea and declared the plans to create a full-fledged parish, because until the 1950s in Korea was a Russian spiritual mission whose faithfuls were in the 1950s transferred to the Ecumenical Patriarchate's jurisdiction. The priest is scheduled to be sent by the end of the year. On 28 November, the ROC officials reacted at the announce of the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision taken on 27 November 2018 to dissolve the Archdiocese of Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe. The ROC officials reminded that during the spring of 2003, Patriarch Alexei II of Moscow proposed to all bishops and Orthodox parishes of Russian tradition in Western Europe to unite as part of the self governing Metropolitan District of the Russian Orthodox Church. On 4 December, in an interview given to Orthodoxy.com, Metropolitan Hilarion declared that the fact the Patriarch of Constantinople had fallen in schism was not without precedence in the history of the Constantinople Patriarchate and gave the example of Nestorius and the Patriarchs of Constantinople who accepted the union with the Catholic Church after the Council of Florence. He also said the Ecumenical Patriarchate's actions in Ukraine were a revenge 
On Patriarch Kirill of Moscow because, according to Hilarion, the ecumenical patriarch believes that it is the Russian Orthodox Church who incited some Orthodox churches not to participate in the Pan-Orthodox Council of Crete. On 14 December, Patriarch of Moscow Kirill sent messages to the primates of the local Orthodox churches, to Pope Francis, to Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby, head of the Anglican Communion, to Rev. Dr. Olav Fikes Tveit, General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, to Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, and to Thomas Greminger, Secretary General of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. He also sent messages to Emmanuel Macron, President of France, and to Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Germany, as they were both heads of the Normandy format. Patriarch Kirill wanted to draw their attention to what he perceived as the large-scale violations of the rights and freedom of hierarchs, clergy and laity of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. <laughs> Declarations by the Ecumenical Patriarchate On 13 December 2018, in his homily, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew declared the decision by the ROC to break communion was «extreme» and «unacceptable» as a lever of pressure. Events in Ukraine Transfer of St. Andrew's Church On 18 October 2018, the Ukrainian parliament gave approval to give permanent use of the St. Andrew's Church in Kiev to the Patriarch of Constantinople for him to hold "...worships, religious ceremonies and processions." in the said church, provided that St. Andrew's Church is also used as a museum and still belongs to the Ukrainian state. St. Andrew's Church will also serve, according to an official, as the Ecumenical Patriarchate's embassy in Ukraine. St. Andrew's Church previous owner was the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church which accepted the transfer. The parliament had to vote on this decision because the church is part of a national heritage site owned by the state. The goal of this vote was, according to the Kiev Post, to speed up the receipt of Atomos ordinance the recognition of a local Orthodox Church in Ukraine by the global Orthodoxy." Irina Lutsenko, the representative of the Ukrainian president in parliament, declared the goal of this action was to make a "...sign of solidarity with this process of Ukraine receiving Atomos," as well as "...a symbolic gesture of unity with the Mother Church Constantinople." However, on the same day the opposition bloc introduced a motion to repeal the transfer, which meant that the Ukrainian president would not be able to sign the motion to transfer the St. Andrew's Church until the motion of repeal is reviewed by the Ukrainian parliament. Finally, President Poroshenko signed the law of transfer on 7 November 2018 and the law took effect on 10 November 2018. On 28 November 2018, in conformity with the Law on Religious Organizations, the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine approved the transfer of the St. Andrew's Church to the Ecumenical Patriarchate's permanent use. On the morning of November 15, four unknown persons threw Molotov cocktails at the St. Andrew's Church but they didn't explode and attacked the priest with a spray. On 27 November one of the suspects was arrested. The first liturgy presided by the members of the Ecumenical Patriarchate in this church took place on 13 December 2018. <coughs> Cancellation of the transfer of the Poche of Lavra On 16 November 2018 Ukrinform reported that the Ukrainian Culture Ministry had challenged the legality of the transfer of the Poche of Lavra, located in the Ternopil Oblast, to the UOCMP. The Poche of Lavra is a historic site of Ukraine. It is only in 2018 that a local deputy of Pochievsky City Council found out that Yanukovych's 2003 order on the transfer of the Lavra until 2052 to the UOCMP 438 was carried out in an unknown way. The police of the Ternopil region opened proceedings in this case. Should the illegality of the transfer be established, the transfer would be cancelled. On 23 November 2018, the Ukrainian Ministry of Justice cancelled the transfer of the Poche of Lavra to the UOCMP. On the next day, the UOCMP monks of the Poche of Lavra clarified that 
The Commission of the Ministry of Justice of Ukraine, in response to the complaint from the Ministry of Culture of Ukraine, has cancelled the registration of the contract for the right to use the Assumption Cathedral, the Trinity Cathedral, monastic cells, the Bell Tower, the Bishop's House and the Holy Gates." On 28 November, the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine approved the return of the Poche of Lavra to the Kremenes Pachav State Historical and Architectural Reserve by cancelling the 2003 transfer law which gave the use of the Lavra to the UOCMP and excluded the Lavra from the Poche of Lavra to the Kremenes Pachav State Historical and Architectural Reserve. <laughs> Planned Unification Council. The idea of a single local Ukrainian church under the Ecumenical Patriarchate's jurisdiction, which would be the result of the union between the UAOC and the UOCKP, had already been formulated on October 2009 by Bishop McCary at a time where he was not yet the head of the UAOC, and Filare supported of a united autocephalous Ukrainian church on October 2011. Preparations for a unification between the UAOC and the UOCKP took place in 2011 between the episcopates of both churches. An attempt of unification between the UAOC and the OUCKP had already taken place between both parties in 2015 but failed. In the end, the unification council between the two churches, which was scheduled to take place on 14 September 2015 between the UAOC and the UOCKP, never took place as both churches could not agree on the future statutes of the United Ukrainian Church. Before this, according to Filaray in 2015, the UAOC and the UOCKP already had four attempts of negotiations in the past 20 years, the 2015 negotiation being the fifth. After the 11th of October 2018 decision of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, a unification council to create a united Ukrainian church should take place between the UOCKP, the UAOC, and some members of the UOCMP who are willing to join an autocephalous Ukrainian church to form a single local church. In Ukraine. The date of this unification council is unknown and its convocation depends on the Patriarch of Constantinople. But Filare, head of the UOCKP, hopes that thanks to his church's efforts this council could take place before the end of the year 2018. Filare declared that the question of which parishes would join a united Ukrainian church will be decided by vote of the congregation of each parish. It is believed that a united Ukrainian church is a compulsory step before Ukraine can be granted its tomos autocephaly from the Patriarch of Constantinople. According to Filare, he would undoubtedly be the winner in case of an election of the leader of a united Ukrainian church. Because Moscow will do everything to destroy the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And therefore, in order to preserve the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and burying sick the cause to the end, he ha s to work to the end. Filare declared he was ready to take the role of head of a united Ukrainian church. On 20 October 2018, in an interview with Espresso TV, the head of the UAOC, McCary, declared that there was no negotiations in the direction of a united Ukrainian church and that after his last meeting with Filare, at which Filare said that only his statute would be used, McCary began to question the success of the union. On 27 October McCary told Zik TV he would not nominate his candidacy during the future council and would instead support the one to be offered by the ecumenical patriarch. In an interview to the BBC on 2 November, Archbishop Job of the ecumenical patriarchate declared the United Ukrainian Church would be called the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. However, Filare, head of the UOCKP, declared on 2 November to Radio Liberty that the United Ukrainian Church would be called Ukrainian Orthodox Church, with Kiev Patriarchate as the church's second name. On 3 November 2018, Ukrainian President Poroshenko, in visit in Turkey, signed a cooperation agreement with the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew. According to Poroshenko, this agreement creates all the conditions for the preparation process for a unification assembly and the process of providing a tomos to be brought into clear correspondence with the canons of the Orthodox Church." This agreement led to protests by hierarchs of the UOCMP and the ROC. The text of the agreement is unknown. On 10 November, the website Vesti UKR allegedly revealed the heads of the UAOC and the UOCKP, respectively McCary and Filare, had individually sent a letter to the Ecumenical Patriarchate. 
McCary declared the same thing as in his interview to Zik TV, that, according to Vesti UKR, he would not run for the position of head of the United Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The real surprise was the fact that Fillere also declared he accepted not to run for this position either. In the letter attributed to Fillere, Fillere allegedly asked the ecumenical patriarch to support the election of the member of the UOCKP Epiphany Dumenko, currently officing as Metropolitan and Patriarchal Deputy in the UOCKP and protege of Fillere, as head of the United Ukrainian Orthodox Church. On 16 November, Fillaret's supposed letter was published by ZNAJ.UA. In this supposed letter, Fillare allegedly declares that he withdrew his candidacy at the request of the Ecumenical Patriarch. On 13 November, at the initiative of President Poroshenko, a meeting between the Episcopate of UOCMP and President Poroshenko was scheduled to take place in Kiev. The UOCMP refused to meet Poroshenko at the Ukrainian House, preferring to meet Poroshenko at the Kiev Petrsk Lavra, and immediately notified Poroshenko of it. Poroshenko refused to hold the meeting at the Petrsk Lavra, preferring to meet members of the UOCMP at the Ukrainian House. The same day, the UOCMP issued an official statement in which the UOCMP confirmed its readiness to meet with the President of Ukraine, but on church territory. Nevertheless, in the evening, some representatives of the council arrived at the Ukrainian house and met with Poroshenko. According to a BBC source from the president's administration, their number did not exceed ten people, but they represented a much larger number of UOCMP hierarchs supporting the creation of an autocephalous church. According to other sources, two metropolitans and the archbishop were present at the meeting with Poroshenko. In addition, Metropolitan Simeon had the letter of attorney to participate in a meeting with the president from 15 hierarchs of the UOCMP. It was assumed that the voting of the hierarchs of the of the UOCMP at the planned council of the Orthodox Local Church of Ukraine will be carried out in a similar way by the letter of attorney. On 14 November, Golashua reported that on 15 November Metropolitan of France Emmanuel of the Ecumenical Patriarchate would come to Ukraine in order to organize the future Unification Council, he would also be the one leading said council. Allegedly, still according to Golashua, the Unification Council would take place on of November 2018 and at that time the Statute of the United Orthodox Church of Ukraine and the text of the Tomos on autocephaly would be ready. The UOCKP officially denied that the Unification Council's date had been officially released. On 15 November, UNN reported that Metropolitan Emmanuel had arrived in Kiev to prepare the unification process. UNN also reported the Unification Council would allegedly take place on the 22nd of November 2018. On 19 November, the Ecumenical Patriarchate issued an official communique, stating that it reiterates its sacred decision to grant the tomos of autocephaly to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, and that the date for the Ukrainian Unification Council will be presented within December 2018," by the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. On the same day, Fillere issued an official communique, I in connection with the proliferation of a number of publications whose explicit purpose is to sow confusion in the Ukrainian Church and in society. In said communique he declared, self-nomination for candidacy in the Church is not allowed by the canons. Earlier it was reported that the bishops of the UOC Kiev Patriarchate would offer my candidacy for election as the primate. I thank the bishops for expressing my trust in me, as well as thanking for the strong support from the fullness of the Kiev Patriarchate and the whole society." He added that if he was chosen as candidate by the UOCKP, he would inform the Unification Council of his decision and explain it. The publication Levy Berig cited sources of ecclesiastical circles saying that the probable date of the Unification Council would be on December 9 to 10. President Poroshenko declared on the 23rd of November that the decision on the approval of the Tomos to Ukraine should be taken on November 27 to 29 during the Synod of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, and that Rostislav Pavlenko, presidential advisor, Advisor, would go to Istanbul to attend at the Synod. Rostislav Pavlenko went to Istanbul on 26 November. Before the Synod, he was received by the Ecumenical Patriarch and had a conversation with him concerning events in Ukraine and final steps toward the granting of the Tomos of autocephaly of the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. 
On 27 November Pavlenko told Interfax that the Ecumenical Patriarchate's communique concerning the granting of the Tomos and the date of the Unification Council should be issued on 29 November. He said that at the Unification Council, the primate of this United Ukrainian church will be elected, and he will go to Istanbul to receive the Tomos. He added that the arrival of the Ecumenical Patriarch in Kiev was not scheduled. It is planned that the newly elected head of the United Ukrainian Orthodox Church will go to Istanbul, accompanied with President Poroshenko, to receive the Church Tomos and lead a mass with the Ecumenical Patriarch. On 3 December, Parliament Speaker Andriy Paraby said the Ecumenical Patriarchate had approved the date of the Unification Council and that this council would be held in Kiev, but Paraby did not say on which date this council would be held. On 4 December, the Greek website Romfea published the first page of the draft statute of the Auto Cephalus Church in Ukraine. Topic: <laughs> Convocation of the Council. On the 5th of December, President Poroshenko declared the Unification Council would be held on the 15th of December. BBC News reported that the council would last one day and that, according to sources in Constantinople, said council would effectively be held on the 15th of December. On the same day, Archbishop Clement, head of the UOCMP, declared that the UOCMP would not participate in this unification council. Also on 5 December, Councillor of Proshenko, Rostislav Pavlenko, declared that the Ukrainian Autocephalous Church will be completely independent and equal amongst other canonically recognized Orthodox churches. He added, the Ukrainian Church will be introduced into the diptych, that is, the list of independent churches. She will become one of the fifteen, already fifteenth, universally recognized, independent churches. And in this there is a fundamental difference." He also said the charter of the United Ukrainian Orthodox Church would be approved by the bishops present at the Unification Council. Still on 5 December, Archbishop Hermann of Chernivtsi and Khotin of the UAOC said no candidate for the position of primate of the future United Ukrainian Orthodox Church will be submitted by the UAOC. On 6 December, the website ROMFEA published the letter of convocation to the Unification Council which was sent to the Orthodox hierarchs of Ukraine. This letter contained a convocation to the Unification Council with the procedure of election of the primate of the future church. The letter said that any bishop can bring with him a priest and either a monk or a member of the laity to the Unification Council, and that the monks, priests, laypersons brought this way, as well as the bishops, would have the right to vote during the council for the elaboration of the charter of the new church and the election of its primate. The vote will be secret and by ballot. Moreover, the President Poroshenko would be an observer during the council. On the same day, Metropolitan Alexander of Periaslav Komelnitsky and Vishnevsky published on his Facebook page a letter, in Greek, sent by the Ecumenical Patriarchate to Metropolitan Anufri. Alexander also gave an unofficial Ukrainian translation of said letter in his post. In the letter to Anufri, the Ecumenical Patriarchate declared it still allowed him to be bishop, in a form of oikonomia and condescension but that if he refused to take part in the Unification Council he would cease to be the Metropolitan of Kiev. The letter to Anufri was published on 7 December, in Greek, on the Greek website ROMFEA. Disagreement with the UOCKP On 6 December, Press Secretary of the UOCKP, Archbishop Yestriti Zoria, wrote on his Facebook page, in response to the allegations of a religious expert who claimed that Filare would not run for the post of primate of the Unified Ukrainian Church, that on 19 November Filare had already expressed his official position. In the same post, he linked to the previous official statement made on 19 November. Still on 6 December, the UOCKP held a synod. The Synod ended the same day and issued a communique. Among the decisions taken by the Synod, one was to support the 19 November Statement of Filare. The communique also mentioned the UOCKP would elect its candidate for the post of primate of the United Ukrainian Church on 13 December 2018, two days before the Unification Council. The communique also also mentioned that considering all the circumstances, the UOCKP as ready, if necessary, to postpone for some time the request to recognize it in a dignity of patriarchate, retaining that name within its boundaries and for domestic use. 
The Council of the UOCKP also decided that only the hierarchs bishops would have the right to vote during the unification kusel and that the vote be open and public. The UOCKP Synod's last two demands, that the voters of the Unification Council be only bishops, and that the vote to elect the new church's primate be open not secret, were opposed to the ones the Ecumenical Patriarchate had previously specified in its letter. On 7 December, Fillere of the UOCKP declared, Moscow is spreading rumors that the Patriarch will resign and will not run. This is not true. I will be Patriarch to death, because the enthronement was in 1995 and no one will remove this grace," and that during the Unification Council the UOCKP will "...reject everything inappropriate if it is demanded from us." On the same day, Metropolitan Onofre decided not to answer the Ecumenical Patriarchate's invitation to the Unification Council and sent back to the Ecumenical Patriarch the letter of convocation he had received, and the UOCMP Synod declared the Unification Council unlawful. On 7 December, Bishop Dimitri of the UOCMP, who is in favor of an autocephalous church in Ukraine, said in an interview that if Fillere was elected by the Unification Council, almost no one from the UOCMP would join. Joined the Autocephalous Ukrainian Church, allegedly, on 8 December 2018, presidential advisor Rostislav Pavlenko met with Fillere and three of Fillere's bishops behind closed doors. It remains unknown what they were talking about behind closed doors. On 10 December, Fillere declared the UOCKP might not participate at the Unification Council because of the disagreement with the Ecumenical Patriarchate concerning the procedure of vote of said council. The same day, the press secretary of the UOCKP, Zoria, issued an official communique which states that t he fact that the Kiev Patriarchate has proposals as for the procedure of the council or the election of the church's head does not mean that a common vision will not be agreed in the end. On the 11th of December, McCary, head of the UAOC, declared the UAOC would come to the unification council at the invitation of the Ecumenical Patriarch. He also responded to the UOCKP's previous decisions by saying, How can the council be the council of bishops, if one priest and one layman with a bishop are invited? On 12 December, in an interview given to the BBC, Zoria declared that if the UOCKP did not take part in the Unification Council, their situation would worsen and their parishes would leave them. On 13 the December, as planned on 6 December, all bishops of the UOCKP held a council chaired by Fillere. This council of the UOCKP decided that the UOCKP would participate in the Unification Council and allow representatives of the clergy, laity and monks to vote, according to the directives of the Ecumenical Patriarch. Press Secretary of the UOCKP, Zoria, declared the same day in an interview to BBC Ukraine that, during said council, the UOCKP had elected its only candidate for the Unification Council but that his identity was secret, and that the tomos would be given on 6 January 2019 by the Ecumenical Patriarch to the elected primate of the new United Ukrainian Church. He also added that each of the UOCKP bishops are expected to bring one priest and one monk or layman to the Unification Council, and that the vote during the Unification Council would be secret. <laughs> <laughs> Unification Council On 12 December, Metropolitan Emmanuel of France of the Ecumenical Patriarchate arrived in Kiev to prepare the Unification Council. On 14 December, Mariki, head of the UAOC, declared in an interview to Radio Liberty that at the demand of the Ecumenical Patriarch he McCary would not run for the post of head of the new United Ukrainian Church. McCary added that he believed the Ecumenical Patriarch had demanded the same thing to Fillere, head of the UOCKP. On 15 December, the Unification Council took place at St. Sophia's Cathedral in Kiev, with tens of thousands people waiting outside the cathedral, in the St. Sophia Square. The same day, the Ukrainian website Pravda published online the project of charter of the United Ukrainian Church that the council would have to approve. During the council, the Ukrainian President Poroshenko made a speech to the hierarchs. President Poroshenko had promised Patriarch Bartholomew the participation of 10 to 15 bishops of UOCMP at the council, but only two members of the UOCMP took part part in it, Metropolitan Simeon and Metropolitan Vicar Alexander. The council started three hours late, because 10 to 12 bishops of the UOCMP had been brought to Kiev by the SBU and forced to sign letters containing their vote for Metropolitan Simeon. 
However, when Simeon presented the letters to the representatives of the Ecumenical Patriarchate at the Council, the representatives demanded that those bishops be presents in person at the Council to vote. The Ecumenical Patriarchate demanded that Metropolitan Simeon be elected by the Council, and President Poroshenko made pressure on the voters in order for Simeon to be elected. However, members of the UOCKP had their own candidate who was faithful to Fillere. Election of Metropolitan Epiphany Metropolitan Epiphany of the UOCKP, who had been chosen on 13 December by the UOCKP as its only candidate, was elected by the Council as Metropolitan of Ukraine by the Unification Council, on 15 December 2018. Ukrainian Supreme Court On 31 October, the Ukrainian Supreme Court declared on its official Facebook page that it is "...proceeding with three claims from various plaintiffs to overturn the parliamentary decree on supporting an appeal to Patriarch Bartholomew." The first lawsuit comes from the UOCMP religious community of the St. Nicholas Church of Berdyansk, Berdyansk Eparchy, Zaporozhye region. The second lawsuit comes from St. George's Monastery of Horodnitsia in the Jytomyr Region 3. The third claim comes from the abbot of the tithes Dijiatini Monastery Bishop Gedeon Karen of Makarov. <laughs> Kerch Strait Incident On 27 November, Parliament Speaker Andriy Paraby announced that the martial law declared in some regions of Ukraine would not delay the receiving of the tomos of autocephaly independence, and that, if anything, the martial law was going to speed up the process of Ukraine receiving its tomos. On 28 November 2018, Ukrainian President Poroshenko declared the 2018 Kerch Strait incident was provoked by Russia in order to force Ukraine to declare martial law and therefore to prevent Ukraine from receiving its tomos of autocephaly. Reactions International community Russia, on 12 October 2018, the Russian President, Vladimir Putin, "...held an operational meeting with the permanent members of the Security Council." The Security Council of Russia that discussed a wide range of domestic and foreign policy issues, including the situation around the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine. According to Putin's press secretary Dmitry Peskov, Ukraine, Ukraine's president, Petro Poroshenko, enthusiastically welcomed Constantinople's October decision, and presented the Ukrainian Church's independence as part of Ukraine's wider conflict with Russia, and Ukraine's desire to integrate with the West by joining the European Union and NATO. Later, during various official speeches, Poroshenko stressed the importance of Ukraine receiving its tomos of autocephaly which Ukraine deserved is the equivalent of a charter of Ukraine's spiritual independence, and was comparable to a referendum on Ukraine's independence and would be another pillar of Ukrainian independence. On the 27th anniversary of the referendum on independence of Ukraine, Poroshenko declared the tomos of autocephaly was the equivalent of Ukraine saying, quote, quote, away from Moscow, quote, dash, quote, Europe now, quote, quote, United States, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, urged all sides to respect the independence of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, reiterating the United States' strong support for religious freedom and the freedom of members of religious groups. Belarus, the President of Belarus, the country in which the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church took place, met members of the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church on 15 October 2018 after the ROC's decision to severe communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate. <laughs> Responses from other autocephalous Eastern Orthodox Churches Church of Cyprus 
On 26 September, the head of the Church of Cyprus, Archbishop Chrysostomos II, had a meeting with the Ukrainian ambassador in Cyprus, Boris Humanyuk. During this meeting, the question of the ecclesiastical problems in Ukraine was discussed. During the meeting, Chrysostomos II expressed his worry and concern about the latest events in the Ukrainian Church and the possibility of the creation of a schism that would harm the unity of all orthodoxy," and declared that the Church of Cyprus was ready to be a "...bridge for the normalization of the unstable situation," between the Patriarchates of Moscow and Constantinople concerning the question of the orthodoxy in Ukraine. Those declarations were published on the official website of the Church of Cyprus. Greek Orthodox Church of Alexandria and the Polish Orthodox Church On 14 October 2018, the Polish Orthodox Church declared that C. Onsent of all the local churches is needed in order to grant the autocephaly to the Ukrainian Church, and a hasty decision can deepen the schism. Autocephaly is granted by the Mother Church after reaching agreement with the primates of all the local churches. On the 22nd of October 2018, the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Alexandria and the Polish Orthodox Church issued a joint statement in which they call upon all those on whom it depends to eliminate church misunderstandings associated with the bestowal of autocephaly to the Ukrainian Church, to please do whatever is within their might to avoid conflict over this issue in order to establish church order on Ukrainian territory." On 16 November 2018, the Polish Orthodox Church issued an official communique after the meeting of its synod on 15 November 2018. The Polish Orthodox Church declared in this communique that it did not recognize the rehabilitation of the UAOC and the UOCKP and that the Synod "...forbids the priests of the Polish Orthodox Church from having liturgical and prayerful contact with the clergy of the so-called Kiev Patriarchate and the so-called Autocephalous Orthodox Church, which have committed much evil in the past." The communique also stated that o nly the observance of the dogmatic and canonical norms of the Church and the preservation of the centuries-old tradition will protect orthodoxy from severe ecclesiastical consequences on an international scale. <inaudible> <inaudible> Serbian Orthodox Church and the Greek Orthodox Church of Antioch Not so long before the schism, head of the Serbian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Irinej, considered the presumable schism between Moscow and Constantinople would be the hardest of all those that have ever been, even greater quantitatively than the schism of 1054. He stated that the Serbian Church does not accept the existence of two Orthodox Christianities, Phanariotic, i.e. Constantinople's, and Moscow's. He added his church did not stand for Moscow nor was against Constantinople, but supports the established order and opposed any decisions that would certainly lead to dire consequences. He also declared that if non-canonical churches were recognized, a similar phenomenon would happen in Macedonia, but also in Montenegro, Abkhazia, and wherever the contracting authorities and perpetrators have imagined, even, perhaps, in Greece. After the schism, Patriarch Irinej gave an interview in which he condemned the 11th of October decision of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. In his opinion, this decision increases the risks of new divisions in the local churches, while the Ecumenical Patriarch had no right to recognize the schismatic church and granted an autocephaly. Some Serbian church officials also expressed concerns that this decision would be followed by recognition of the Macedonian Orthodox Church, which had previously split from the Serbian Church. On the 20th of October, the Serbian and Antiochian patriarchs made a common declaration in which they appeal to their brother, His All Holiness the Ecumenical Patriarch, to restore the fraternal dialogue with the Orthodox Church of Russia in order to, with the fraternal assistance and participation of all the other primates of the local Orthodox autocephalous churches, resolve the conflict between the Patriarchates of Constantinople and Moscow and to restore back the bond of peace in the Orthodox Church. On 12 November 2018, the Synod of the Serbian Orthodox Church published a communique in which they declared they considered the reinstatement of Filare and Makari as non-binding for the Serbian Orthodox Church, and that they would therefore not communicate with them or their supporters. 
Synod also requested convocation of a pan-Orthodox synod over the issue. <laughs> Georgian Orthodox Church Although Ukrainian parliament chairman Andriy Paraby stated after an October 5 visit to Tbilisi that the Georgian Orthodox Church GOC was in support of Kiev, Georgian Patriarch Ilya II later denied this, and church spokesman Mikhail Botkoveli said, "...we need more time to discuss the arguments of the Russian Orthodox Church, after which the Georgian Orthodox Church will announce its position." It is reported that there are sharp divisions within the Georgian Orthodox Church, which analysts see as the most pro-Russian institution in an anti-Russian country. A major factor in the dispute within the GOC is the role of the Abkhazian Orthodox Church AOC, which itself broke from the GOC. The Russian Orthodox Church has offered to mediate the dispute between the GOC and the AOC. Some clerics see this as a reason to maintain the goodwill of the Russian Orthodox Church and others view the Abkhazian Church as already under the control of Moscow. Some accused Moscow of hypocrisy, with one theologian arguing publicly that the Moscow Patriarchate is betraying the biblical principle of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Topic: <laughs> Romanian Orthodox Church. The Romanian Orthodox Church on 26 October called for Constantinople to cooperate with Moscow in resolving the issue, and stated that, "...unity is preserved through co-responsibility and cooperation between the local Orthodox churches, by cultivating dialogue and synodality at the pan-Orthodox level, this being a permanent necessity in the life of the Church." On 23 November 2018, the Ecumenical Patriarch arrived in Romania to lead the consecration of the Romanian People's Salvation Cathedral, which was planned on Sunday, 25 November. The Ecumenical Patriarch was officially welcomed by Patriarch Daniel of Romania. On Sunday, 25 November, the Ecumenical Patriarch and Patriarch Daniel of Romania consecrated together the Romanian People's Salvation Cathedral. The Ecumenical Patriarch chaired the first Mass of the Romanian People's Salvation Cathedral. Both the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew and the Patriarch Daniel of Romania led the church service this day, it was the very first church service in the cathedral. The presence of Bartholomew and the absence of Patriarch Kirill of Moscow at the cathedral inauguration appears to suggest that Romania is siding with Constantinople in the dispute. Albanian Orthodox Church On 10 October, Archbishop Anastasios, head of the autocephalous Albanian Orthodox Church, sent a letter to the Moscow Patriarch. Extracts of this letter have been published on of November on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church. In those extracts, the head of the Albanian Church declared that granting autocephaly to Ukraine was a dangerous undertaking," and that, "...instead of the unity of Orthodox Christians in Ukraine, there has appeared a danger of schism in the unity of the universal Orthodoxy." He also said they should do everything to hold a pan Orthodox Council. The next day, the official website of the Albanian Orthodox Church published the full text of the letter of October 10, as well as the second letter, dated November 7, through the hosting service Doctroid, in English and in Greek. In his first letter, Archbishop Anastasios declared the 14th of September decision of Moscow had dangerously complicated the whole matter. Concerning Ukraine, this passage had not been released among the extracts on the official website of the Department of External Church Relations of the Russian Orthodox Church. In his second letter, Archbishop Anastasios disagreed with the decisions of the Moscow Patriarchate to break communion with the Church of Constantinople, stating it is unthinkable that the Divine Eucharist could be used as a weapon against another church. We proclaim it is impossible for us to agree to such decisions." He also added that recent developments have made the convocation of a pan-Orthodox synaxis extremely difficult, but that the Albanian Orthodox Church was willing to participate in it, if the pan-Orthodox synaxis was convoked canonically. The second letter was not published by Moscow. Topic: <inaudible> Orthodox Church of the Czech Lands and Slovakia. 
On 10 November, the head of the Orthodox Church of the Czech Lands and Slovakia OCCLS, Archbishop Rastislav of Presho CS, met with the head of the UOCMP, Metropolitan Onofry. On this occasion, Archbishop Rastislav of Presho declared his concern about the situation in Ukraine and condemned the Ecumenical Patriarchate's actions, stating that it is impossible to create even a temporary good on the violation of the sacred canons of the Orthodox Church. On 24 November, Archbishop of Prague of the OCCLS, Michael, met with Metropolitan Agafangel of Odessa of the UOCMP. Said Archbishop of Prague declared to the UOCMP members, We have arrived to show our unity with you, as representatives of an autocephalous church. Other Orthodox churches The Bulgarian, Macedonian and Montenegrin latter two being uncanonical Orthodox churches have stated that they cannot yet comment. The Macedonian Orthodox Church has asked to be canonically recognized by the Ecumenical Patriarch but was met with a harsh refusal. Constantinople insisted on drawing a distinction between the situation with the Ukrainian Church and the Macedonian Church. Constantinople had never given up its own jurisdiction over Ukraine in favor of Moscow, whereas it did so with the Macedonian Eparchies in favor of the Serbian Church in 1922, when a Macedonian state did not exist. Responses from churches under the jurisdiction of the Russian Orthodox Church Belarusian Orthodox Church On the 11th of September 2018, the Synod of the Belarusian Orthodox Church, the Exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church in Belarus, issued a statement proclaiming their unanimous support for the position of Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, protesting the actions of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. On the 5th of October, the Metropolitan Pavel of the Belarusian Orthodox Church urge D the Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople and the Synod of the Church of Constantinople to review their decisions and do everything possible to either disavow the previous decision or withdraw it, stopping this process, which is taking absolutely distinct forms of church schism throughout Eastern Orthodoxy." After the schism the Belarusian Orthodox Church has not released an official statement about the break of communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Since it is the exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church, it obeys the decisions of the Holy Synod of the Rock. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia. On the 25th of September 2018, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia, an autonomous church of the Moscow Patriarchate (ROCOR) suspended concelebration with the bishops of the Constantinople Patriarchate and participation in the work of the Episcopal Assemblies with their membership." On 10 October 2018, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia has express ed its profound indignation at the blatant violation of the holy canons by the Orthodox Church of Constantinople. The decision of its hierarchy to send its exarchs into the canonical territory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, without the agreement and permission of His Holiness Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and all Russia and His Beatitude Metropolitan Onofry of Kiev and all Ukraine, is a gross and unprecedented incursion by one local church into a distant canonical territory. On 18 October 2018, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia has expressed complete support of the position taken by the Holy Synod of the Patriarchate of Moscow, following its meeting of 15 October 2018, and severed Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate. On 8 December 2018, the ROCOR released a communique in which it states that it fully supports Onofri and considers the Ecumenical Patriarchate's actions in Ukraine as illegal. After a meeting on 29 November 2018 between the Diocese of Berlin and Germany of the MP and the German Diocese of the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia, both decided to follow the decision of the ROC to severe Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Ukrainian Orthodox Church Moscow Patriarchate 
On 13 September, Secretary for Inter-Orthodox Affairs of the Department for External Church Relations of the ROC, Archpriest Igor Yakumchuk, urged the UOCMP believers to unite around Metropolitan Onofri. The eparchies who pledged support to Onofri were in chronological order, Rovno, Odessa, Zaporozhye, Poltava, Severodonetsk, Kamenskoy, Kharkiv, Lugansk, Alexandria, Mukachevo, Jatomir, Kirovograd, Chernikov, Crimea, Izium, Novaya Kahovka, Nikolaev, and Nezhin. The three dioceses of Sumy, Konotop, and Romney also declared their support for Onofri. On the 13th of November, the Synod of the UOCMP, an autonomous church of the Moscow Patriarchate, officially declared in a resolution that they considered the 11th of October declaration of the Ecumenical Patriarchate invalid and canonically null and void, and that the communion between the UOCMP and the Ecumenical Patriarchate is deemed impossible at present and thereby ceases. Two bishops of the UOCMP did not sign the resolution, one of them being Metropolitan Simeon of Vinitsia and Bar. In an interview given on 14 November to the Vinitsia Press Club, Metropolitan Simeon of Vinitsia and Bar of the UOCMP said he did not sign the UOCMP resolution as he disagreed with some statements in the resolution and considered this resolution as bad. He also said he would participate in the Unification Council. On 15 November, most of the clergy of Vinitsia of the UOCMP met in emergency, spontaneously and without the prior consent of its hierarchy. Most of the clergy of Vinitsia publicly expressed its support to the 13 November resolution of the UOCMP, and made an appeal to Metropolitan Simeon to ask him to hold a general meeting of the Vinitsia eparchy. On 17 November, in a semen, Metropolitan Simeon clarified that his refusal was his own decision, because, he stated, not a single bishop represented the opinion of his eparchy or people at the council, everyone spoke for themselves." On 20 the November, an official monthly general meeting of the Vinitsia eparchy chaired by Metropolitan Simeon was held, the eparchial council, "...categorically condemned the unauthorized assemblies held in the Vinitsia eparchy," and stated that the resolution of the Bishops' Council of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, taken on November 13, 2018, is a document binding on all bishops, clergy and laity of the UOC and confirmed its readiness to comply with the resolution by the entire Vinitsia eparchy." On 16 November 2018 Metropolitan Sofroni Dimitric of Cherkasy and Kniv in his interview to BBC expressed his support for the creation of an autocephalous church in Ukraine. He also said that he was going to participate in the Unification Council, and perhaps he would join the new autocephalous church. On 20 November 2018, Chancellor of the UOCMP, Metropolitan Anthony of Borispol and Brovery, declared in an interview that, S actions will be applied to the members of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate who participate in the Unification Council. On 7 December, the UOCMP Synod declared the Unification Council conveyed by the Ecumenical Pariarchate as unlawful. <laughs> Archdiocese of Chersonesis The Archdiocese of Chersonesis is an archdiocese under the jurisdiction of the Moscow Patriarchate. The Archdiocese of Chersonesis takes charge of the Orthodox communities of the Moscow Patriarchate in France, Swiss, Portugal and Spain. On the 22nd of November 2018, during its annual session, the Archdiocese of Chersonesis unanimously declared its support of the decision made by the ROC on 15 October 2018 to break communion with Constantinople. On the next day, this decision was announced through an official communique on the Archbishopric's official website in which they stated that the action of the Ecumenical Patriarch in Ukraine was anti-canonical. Responses from churches under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate Archdiocese of Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe The Archdiocese of Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe was an exarchate of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, his primate at the time the archdiocese's dissolution was announced was Archbishop John of Cheriupolis 
On 18 October 2018, in reaction to the 15 October decision of the Russian Orthodox Kruch to severe communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate, the AROCWE released a communique. In this communique, the AROCWE declared that the AROCWE Archdiocese Exarchate under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate was in full communion with the whole Orthodox Church. Indeed, the Ecumenical Patriarchate did not break communion with the Patriarchate of Moscow and continues to commemorate it according to the order of the diptychs. All the Orthodox faithful can therefore participate fully in the liturgical and sacramental life of our parishes. The communique concluded by asking all the priests, deacons, monks, nuns and faithful of the AROCWE to pray for the unity of the church on the 21st of November. The rector of the Russian Church of the Transfiguration in Stockholm expelled 16 faithfuls from the parish because they had publicly ceased to recognize the legitimacy and spiritual authority of Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew and Archbishop John of Cheriopoulos after the 15th of October. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Defection of the Russian Orthodox Church of the Nativity of Christ. On Sunday, the 28th of October 2018, the Archpriest George Blatinsky of the AROCWE, Rector of the Russian Orthodox Church of the Nativity of Christ and Saint Nicholas the Thaumaturge (FR) in Florence, ceased commemorating during the liturgy the canonical authorities to whom he is responsible, the Ecumenical Patriarch and the Archbishop of the AROCWE John of Cheriopolis. At the end of the celebration, Blatinsky told the faithful present that from that Sunday onward the parish had been placed under the jurisdiction of Metropolitan Hilarion of the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia of the Patriarchate of Moscow. He justified this change of jurisdiction by saying that the Ecumenical Patriarchate had fallen into schism as a result of its intervention in Ukraine. According to the AROCWE's information, this decision, which was taken unilaterally by George Blatinsky, was thereafter been presented as being the result of a unanimous vote of a general assembly of the parish, which was contrary to ecclesiastical norms and the civil statutes of the parish since no assembly had been convened for that day in accordance with the rules. Metropolitan Hilarion of the ROCOR assured Archpriest George Blatinsky by telephone that he did not need any letter of canonical release from the AROCWE in order to be received into the ROCOR's jurisdiction since, according to Met. Hilarion, all those who depend on Constantinople are schismatics. Archbishop John imposed the sanctions of a ban a divinis suspension of priestly functions, which took effect on 1 November 2018, upon Archpriest George Blatinsky and Priest Oleg Turkan, the second priest of the parish. On 1 November, a communique announcing their suspension was published on the AROCWE's official websites. Archbishop John also sent a letter of protestation to Metropolitan Hilarion of the ROCOR, in New York, on 5 November 2018. On the 22nd of November, the AROCWE released a communique explaining the situation. In said communique, the AROCWE also published the letter Archbishop John had sent to Metropolitan Hilarion of the ROCOR, in French, Russian, and English, and said the AROCWE had not yet received an answer from Metropolitan Hilarion of the ROCOR. Topic: <laughs> Dissolution of the Archdiocese. On 27 November the Ecumenical Patriarchate decided unanimously to dissolve its exarchate of the Archdiocese of Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe AROCWE. .On 28 November, a communique concerning the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision to dissolve its exarchate of the AROCWE was published in French on the Fanarian blog and on the official Facebook page of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. The communique says the Ecumenical Patriarchate decided to revoke the Patriarchal Tomos of 1999 by which it granted pastoral care and administration of Orthodox parishes of Russian tradition in Western Europe to his Archbishop Exarch T. He Ecumenical Patriarchate has decided to integrate and connect parishes to the various holy metropolises of the Ecumenical Patriarchate in the countries where they are located. 
On the same day, a communique on the website of the AROCWE Exarchate was published. In the AROCWE communique, it is stated, that the AROCWE had, in no way, requested the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision, that the AROCWE primate, Archbishop John of Cheriupolis, had not been consulted prior to this decision being taken, and that said primate had learned about the decision during a private conversation with the Ecumenical Patriarch in Istanbul. The communique also asked the faithfuls of the AROCWE to maintain their calm. On the 28th of November, the Saint Sergius Orthodox Theological Institute, which is was under the jurisdiction of the AROCWE, published a communique in which it declared it renews today its faithful attachment to the person and action of His All Holiness Bartholomew I and reaffirms its attentive following in the spirit of unity called by the Holy and Great Council of Crete. On 29 November, after the Synod had ended, the same communique which had been released one day prior concerning the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision to dissolve the AROCWE was released, in French, on the official website of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. On 30 November, the Council of the AROCWE declared in a communique that this decision of the Ecumenical Patriarchate was unforeseen. The communique added that since the AROCWE had not requested this decision, two things should be done before the AROCWE would comply to this decision. Arbishop John of Cheriupolis, as the head of the AROCWE, will have to invite the priests of the Archdiocese to a pastoral assembly, on December 15, 2018, to discuss with those who carry with him the spiritual responsibility of the parishes and faithful of the Archdiocese and the AROCWE Council will have to "...convene a General Assembly of the Archdiocese, in which all the clergy and lay delegates elected by the parishes and communities, which are the adherent associations of the diocesan union, will take part." The communique concluded that since John of Cheriupolis had not requested this decision, he still remained fully in pastoral charge of the Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe. American Carpatho-Russian Orthodox Diocese Two priests of the American Carpatho-Russian Orthodox Diocese left the Ecumenical Patriarchate to join the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia in response to the Ecumenical Patriarchate's decision concerning Ukraine. <laughs> Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Germany On October 16, the head of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Germany published a statement on the Metropolis's website saying, With disappointment and grief I have noted yesterday's decision of the Holy Synod of the Moscow Patriarchate to severe the Eucharistic communion with the Ecumenical Patriarchate, whose Metropolitan in Germany I am. As was the case then, this time too applies, particularly affected are the parishes in the so-called diaspora, where there is a coexistence between the two patriarchates, in other words also in Germany. As far as Ukraine is concerned, it is the common concern of all Orthodox Christians how to succeed in solving ecclesiastical cleavages ecclesiastically, not politically, it has to be non-violent and effective. This is the determined and irrevocable intention of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, which, as a mother church, has the right to do so and, I believe, is obliged to have the daughter Ukraine grown up into self-employment. That the older daughter Moscow does not recognize it is regrettable. <laughs> Canonical issues The schism has its root in a dispute over who between the Patriarchate of Moscow and the Patriarchate of Constantinople has canonical jurisdiction over the See of Kiev, Kiev and, therefore, which Patriarchate has canonical jurisdiction over the territory of Ukraine. T. He principal argument proposed concerning the granting of the ecclesiastical status of autocephaly to Ukraine by the Ecumenical Patriarchate is that Ukraine constitutes the canonical territory of the Patriarchate of Moscow and that, consequently, such an act on the part of the Ecumenical Patriarchate would comprise an «intervention» into a foreign ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Quote, the Patriarchate of Moscow's claim of canonical jurisdiction is based mostly on two documents, the Patriarchal and Synodal Act or Letter of Issue a 1686, and a 1686 Patriarchal Letter to the Kings of Russia. 
Both those documents are reproduced in the Appendix section of a study published by the Ecumenical Patriarch called the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church, the documents speak. The Church of Constantinople claims the Church of Constantinople has canonical jurisdiction over the See of Kiev and that the documents upon which the Russian Orthodox Church bases its claim of jurisdiction over said See of Kiev do not support the Rock's claim. On 1 July 2018, the Ecumenical Patriarch said that Constantinople was the mother church of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine and declared that Constantinople never ceded the territory of Ukraine to anyone by means of some ecclesiastical act, but only granted to the Patriarch of Moscow the right of ordination or transfer of the Metropolitan of Kiev on the condition that the Metropolitan of Kiev should be elected by a clergy laity congress and commemorate the Ecumenical Patriarch. It is written in the Tome of Autocephaly, which was granted by the Mother Church Constantinople to the Church of Poland. Original separation from our throne of the metropolis of Kiev and of the two Orthodox churches of Lithuania and Poland, which depend on it, and their annexation to the Holy Church of Moscow, in no way occurred according to the binding canonical regulations, nor was the agreement respected concerning the full ecclesial independence of the Metropolitan of Kiev, who bears the title of Exarch of the Ecumenical Throne. Ecumenical Patriarchate's claims The Ecumenical Patriarchate issued a document authored by various clerics and theologians called the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church, the documents speak. This document analyzes canonical historic documents namely the Patriarchal and Synodal Act or Letter of Issue. A 1686 and the 1686 Patriarchal Letter to the Kings of Russia to see if the claim over the See of Kiev by the Patriarch of Moscow is canonical or not. The date of publication of this document is unknown, but the earliest online version can be found on 28 September 2018 on the website of the Greek Orthodox Archidiocese of America in PDF in English as well as in Greek. In September 2018, the Holy Orthodox Archdiocese of Italy and Malta issued a translation which was on 17 October published on the official Italian website of the Archdiocese of Russian Orthodox Churches in Western Europe. The Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church was translated in Ukrainian as of 6 October 2018. The Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church concludes that through the autocratic abolition of the commemoration of the Ecumenical Patriarch by each Metropolitan of Kiev, the de jure dependence of the Metropolis of Kiev and the Church of Ukraine on the Ecumenical Patriarchate was arbitrarily rendered an annexation and amalgamation of Ukraine to the Patriarchate of Moscow. All these events took place in a period when the ecumenical throne was in deep turmoil and incapable on account of the circumstances of the time to raise its voice against such capricious actions. The Church of Ukraine never ceased to constitute de jure canonical territory of the ecumenical patriarchate. The Ecumenical Patriarchate was always aware of this despite the fact that, on account of the circumstances of the time, it tolerated the arbitrary actions by the Patriarchate of Moscow. T he Ecumenical Patriarchate is entitled and obliged to assume the appropriate maternal care for the Church of Ukraine in every situation where this is deemed necessary. Konstantin Vetochnikov, 2 Ph.D. in Theology, Ph.D. in History and member of the Collège de France, who participated in Augustus 2016 to the 23rd International Congress of Byzantine Studies in Belgrade where he made a report on the subject of the transfer of the See of Kiev, and who helped the Ecumenical Patriarchate on the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church, declared on 27 December 2016 that the transfer of the See of Kiev from the authority of the Ecumenical Patriarchate to the authority of the Russian Orthodox Orthodox Church never took place. Later, Vitoshnikov made an analysis of the arguments of the Russian Orthodox Church. He pointed out that, according to the strict dogmatic approach, Akrabia, Akrabia the whole territory of Russia was originally subjected to the Ecumenical Patriarchate. After the Muscovy had gone into the schism in the 15th century, it received autocephaly according to a more flexible approach, oikonomia, oikonomia to heal this schism. The Metropolitan of Kiev at the same time remained within the jurisdiction of Constantinople. Then, also according to the Oikonomia approach, the right to ordain Metropolitans of Kiev was transferred to the Patriarch of Moscow. 
This was not a change in the boundaries of the Moscow Patriarchate Eparchy, as it was issued by a document of a lower level ectosis, ectosios which was used for various temporary solutions. For pastoral reasons, the Ecumenical Patriarchate subsequently did not assert its rights to this territory. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union there was a split among the Orthodox of Ukraine and the Russian Church for 30 years failed to overcome this split. And now, also for pastoral reasons, the Ecumenical Patriarchate was forced to act in accordance with the principle of Akrabia, and so it decided to abolish the right to ordain Metropolitans of Kiev which had been earlier transferred to the Moscow Patriarchate in accordance with Oikonomia. <laughs> Arguments against the Ecumenical Patriarchate's claims On 20 August 2018, the pro-Moscow anonymous site Union of Orthodox Journalists analyzed the Ecumenical Patriarchate's claim of jurisdiction over Ukraine and concluded the See of Kiev had been transferred to the Patriarchate of Moscow. They added that even if the Ecumenical Patriarchate decided to abrogate the 1686 transfer, the territory covered in 1686 by the See of Kiev's territory was a far cry from the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of today and covered less than half of Ukraine's current territory in its the 15th of October 2018 official statement the Russian Orthodox Church gave counterarguments to the ecumenical patriarch's arguments Metropolitan Hilarion chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations declared in an interview that Constantinople's plan to grant autocephaly to a part of the Russian Orthodox Church that once was subordinate to Constantinople runs counter to historic truth." His argument is that the entire territory of Ukraine has not been under Constantinople's jurisdiction for 300 because the Kiev metropolis that was incorporated into the Moscow Patriarchate in 1686 was much smaller it did not include Donbass, Odessa and some other regions and therefore does not coincide with the present-day territory of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. A smillier argument was given on 13 November in a live phone interview to Radio Liberty by the head of the Information and Education Department of the UOCMP, Archbishop Clement. Archbishop Clement of the UOCMP considers that, to revoke the letter on the transfer of the Kiev metropolis in 1686 is the same as to cancel the decisions of the ecumenical councils of the 4th or 7th centuries. On 8 November the pro-Moscow anonymous website Union of Orthodox Journalists analyzed the same documents as the Ecumenical Throne and the Ukrainian Church the Patriarchal and Synodal Act or Letter of Issue a 1686 and the 1686 Patriarchal Letter to the Kings of Russia and concluded that the See of Kiev had been completely transferred to the jurisdiction of the Russian Church in 1686. Topic. Possibility of a pan-Orthodox synaxis on the question of Ukraine The possibility of a pan-Orthodox synaxis has been raised before and after the official break of communion. On 29 September 2018, the Reverend Alexander Volkov, the press secretary of the Patriarch of Moscow, declared the L. Ocal National TAS Orthodox churches may initiate a pan-Orthodox synaxis, consultative assembly or conference, on the problem of the Ecumenical Patriarch's decision to grant autocephaly to the Church in Ukraine." However the problem was that convening such a synaxis is a prerogative of the first among the equals, that is, the Ecumenical Patriarch. Volkov noted there was Oh, forms of pan-Orthodox synaxis. There are the elders of the Church who can take this task upon themselves. If you look at the diptychs the table specifying the order of commemorating the primates of Orthodox Churches, TAS, the next in line after the Ecumenical Patriarch, TAS is the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria. Or else, there is the so called synaxis of the eldest patriarchs, of Alexandria, Jerusalem, and Antioch. 
Thus far, Patriarch John X of the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch, Patriarch Irenege of the Serbian Orthodox Church, Archbishop Chrysostomos II of the Church of Cyprus, the Polish Orthodox Church Primate Metropolitan Sawa Rykuniak, the Orthodox Church in America Primate Metropolitan Tikon, Archbishop Anastasios, Primate of the Albanian Orthodox Church, and three hierarchs of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church Metropolitans Gabriel of Levesque, John of Varna and Veliki Prislav, and Daniel of Vedan have expressed their desire for a pan-Orthodox Synaxis or pan-Orthodox Council over the question of Ukraine in various statements. On 12 November 2018, the Synod of the Serbian Orthodox Church published a communique in which they requested the convocation of a pan-Orthodox Synod, on 7 November, answering the question, who could, for instance, convene a pan-Orthodox Council and chair it? Metropolitan Hilarion declared in an interview, which was published on the official website of the ROC Department for External Church Relations, that it was obvious that the Ecumenical Patriarch could not chair a pan-Orthodox council since the most important problems in the Orthodox world are linked with precisely his Ecumenical Patriarch anti-canonical activity. On 4 December, in an interview, when asked about the fact that convoking a pan-Orthodox council was According to the canons, a prerogative of the Ecumenical Patriarch, Metropolitan Hilarion replied, Which canons? I believe those canons do not exist. The Ecumenical Councils were not convoked by the Ecumenical Patriarch, they were convoked by the Emperor. The fact the Patriarch of Constantinople has been given the right to convey councils in the 20th century is the result of a consensus reached by all the local churches. It is not at a personal initiative that the council is convoked, but only with the consent of all the local churches. We had, until recently, the first among equals, that is the Patriarch of Constantinople, who convoked the councils in the name of the local Orthodox churches. Now, the unifying element is no more the Patriarchate of Constantinople which, so to speak, auto-destroyed itself. It is its decision. We have to think about the future, who will convoke the councils, will it be the Patriarch of Alexandria, or another Patriarch, or else we will generally not have a council? Whatever. The Patriarch of Constantinople, as long as he stays in schism, even if he convokes a council the Russian Orthodox Church will not take part in it. See also 1996 Moscow-Constantinople Schism Bulgarian Schism Schism of 1054 Eastern Orthodox Church Organization Philetism Russian Irredentism Russian Military Intervention in Ukraine 2014 -present. russia Russia-Ukraine Relations Russian Nationalism Ukrainian Nationalism <laughs>